And then, with some toning here, perhaps a splash page there for thematic resonance, then that, that should finish off the... You're in my light! I prefer not to ink my pencil work under the duress of having a big blotchy shadow on my light. So if you would move, please, and thank you. Oh, you got the sodas! Sweet! I guess I can take a break. I already spent a week last month in a wrist brace and that really put me off schedule. I mean, I'm caught up now, but still. Patient Xerox can never truly physically rest, and for the same reason, neither can I. Though, I guess you'll just have to understand the concessions I make to avoid getting carpal tunnel before I turn 22. Not all of us can regrow our wrists, no matter how much we may want to. Well, you were the one who told me to do those I prefer statements to express how I was feeling, instead of just expecting you to know. I know, I hardly believe it myself, but I listen to you when you speak. It's just hard to find just the right things to listen to while drawing, considering so many of my outlines are so loose and flowy. Anything with too much dialogue confuses the scene I'm writing, but music that's only instrumentals tend to numb my mind into a state of being totally and completely aware of what I'm doing at that very instant. And with a style, that requires me to detail something as simple as the floorboards as intricately as I do. I don't think anyone could handle that for three four, five hours at a time, and still be content with their life choices. But your voice is a pretty happy medium between droning melodies and distracting noise. I think I could listen to it forever and would prefer the opportunity to do so. I think that was meant as a compliment, but I don't have the time to explain that kind of thing. I have a deadline! And I don't care what the editors say. I'm not about to take another break so soon. I got that last issue in under duress. And they accepted it under duress. They like the series. But they will most certainly put it on hiatus if I prove myself to be unreliable in the health department. And as a rookie artist on my sixth issue, I cannot afford that. And patient Xerox cannot afford that either. In fact, if she was in the same scenario, she'd refuse to. Though, I think she's more inclined to than I. She lives in this dystopian future where thanks to a minor bit of fiddling with humanity's genetic code, blood types no longer exist leaving all of humanity universal donors as the default, making even cosmetic organ transplants the norm as all money becomes drenched in the blood in the process of buying and selling human lives. Patient Xerox comes in as an anomaly who, due to medical experimentation, is capable of growing back the organs that are taken and surviving the process countless times, as she plans to rise to the top in her own corporate empire of cruelty-free organ transplants with her ragtag gang of business partners and scientists and doctors, as she, in a world of cynics, tries to prove that a life is not worth another. They're worth the same as they should be. Well, I haven't revealed the medical experimentation part yet, but you'd know that if you were reading along, which you obviously have not been. If you're tired of hearing the plot synopsis, pick up a floppy already! I've even been giving you some copies for free. Don't begin telling me you think it's too gory or whatever. You're not the one who had to watch open heart surgery for reference. Oh, yeah. You were there for that. 
Huh. I need help with pacing Xerox. What? Did you think I only called you to get me a soda? <laughs> Have I done that before? I'll admit that a day is kind of fold in on each other after a while when you're doing the same thing over and over again, no matter how much you may like it. Anyways, and the issue after the next is going to be revealed that Patient Xerox has been in an illicit relationship this entire time with one of the mysterious benefactors of her small business. I've always been far too busy drawing to know what it's actually like to date someone. I want you to date me, so I can figure out how to write it. That's just it! I hate the romance in most comics I read because it doesn't mean a thing in the world! What does it matter if they make an official wedding album if Catwoman's just gonna leave them at the altar anyhow? It's not like the big publishers are ever going to commit to anything because they need to keep their iconic, century-old characters elastic and evergreen no matter how many sidekicks they add. And reading romance-focused comics doesn't feel right anyhow because their plots are focused on the pursuit, and that's not an accurate portrayal of the relationship I intend to write. And they're mostly about high schoolers, anyhow. The romance I'm writing is that of a slightly incongruent power dynamic between mature, but emotionally charged adults, featuring one, who doesn't exactly believe in the other's dreams despite supporting her through them and proceeds to act condescending towards her because of them. And the other, who beats the odds at every turn, constantly one-upping the stakes as well as how much further they're invested in one another. That is the kind of relationship I'm writing. Though, in retrospect, I might have been writing this character with you in mind anyway, so really, if you don't date me, it'll be anathema for the character. I recognize that I'm not the easiest person to be friends with as is. That alone have anything more to do with me for it, but I'd be willing to make it worth your while. We're going to have to go out on dates for me to be able to write the equivalent in fictional context. And I'm sure I can make sure it'll be something you'll enjoy. That's just extra fodder for characterization for the mysterious benefactor. And even when I'm working, you can sit in my lap, or I'll sit in yours, or whatever coupley things you've heard of people doing, as long as you don't jostle me too much, or make my lines all squiggly. You're the only person I could trust with a task like this to begin with. I like you almost as much as I love comics. I think it only makes sense that Patient Xerox could only really give her heart to someone like you. Even if that someone like you is a mysterious benefactor who can only have sinister intentions, and even if she has more than one heart to give. <laughs>